Hey you guys, it's Christina. Happy Friday, I am so happy to have you here. It's Friday, which means it's time for another Friday FAQ. Every Wednesday or Thursday, I get on my Instagram and I give you all the opportunity to ask me a question. And from these questions, I pick one really good question to answer here on my YouTube channel just for you. This time for me is super special because I get the opportunity to connect with you, to talk about everything from life, love, food, traveling, and more. I really appreciate you for being here, so I just wanna say thank you. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button and join the family. My channel is all about health and wellness, and I am so happy to have you here. Just a quick side note, I'm gonna be uploading a ton of raw vegan Halloween recipes to my app this coming weekend. So for those of you who are looking for hocusy pocusy, spooky wooky, healthy Halloween treats, definitely check out those recipes on my app and I'll put the link in the description below for you. And for those of you who are looking to do a raw vegan challenge, I have my seven day program and I'll put that link below for you as well. Okay, so on to our question. This question comes from Let's Shine Together Forever and they asked me, why did you start eating salt? You used to always avoid salt. Now I had a ton of questions uh, this time go round. Everything from people asking me about uh, having a boyfriend, raw vegan pregnancies, how I started my business, my motivation for going fully raw, the kind of detox that I experienced, uh, how old I am, every question possible. I've made a lot of videos for you guys recently about some of these things, so go back to my channel, watch some of them. Some of them have just happened this month, so yeah, I'm not leaving you guys hanging. I'm here, I'm answering your questions, go check them out. So let's talk about salt for a minute because I went pretty much a good eight year time span, maybe even longer, I'm gonna say eight at the minimum, without consuming any salt. The only salt that I would ever consume came in the form of a fruit or a vegetable like celery or tomatoes or Swiss chard stems. I'm gonna preface this by saying that this has been my experience. I'm not making any recommendations to other people. I'm merely just sharing what my story is and what my experience has been with eating salt. Within the past two to three years, I've started adding some pink Himalayan salt or some Celtic sea salt into my recipes. Not throughout the day, not a lot, just a, like a tiny teaspoon or like a pinch of salt in my salad dressings in the evening. And I'll share with you why. I haven't had any health deficiencies. I've had my blood tested. Uh, all of my sodium levels have always been normal. I haven't had any weird relapses or anything like that. I'll explain to you the story. So those of you who've been following me a long time know that I've been a long distance runner for over a decade. By long distance runner, I mean I went a good 10 years not missing my run. And I used to run six to eight miles every day and often more than that. The past two to three years, I have added on a hot yoga practice into my daily routine and I've become so passionate about this. Now this is not a normal yoga practice, I do I do really intense yoga. I do like a 100 degree room, hot Baptiste uh, vinyasa flow, and I've gotten into the practice of doing not just one hour a day, but sometimes I'll do two hours a day in a really hot room that's 90 to 100 degrees, and I am sweating and pouring out as much as I possibly can. So I've started doing this in addition with running. Now I don't do six to 10 miles every day anymore. I do about three to four miles in addition with my yoga and then maybe I'll do boxing uh, maybe once every other week as well just to kind of mix it up and keep things fun and interesting. About six months after I started getting really into my hot yoga practice, I started noticing that when I was waking up the next morning, I still felt a little tired. Now granted, I still had energy, I wasn't, you know, exhausted, exhausted, but I noticed a difference. And I would go into yoga sometimes and everybody would say how much they loved the practice from the previous day, they had so much energy that day, and at first I thought I was dehydrated from having spent too much 
uh, time in a hot room. So for a while I thought I was just having heat exhaustion until I talked to one of the teachers and I asked them, I said, do you ever get heat exhaustion spending so much time in this hot room? You're, you're in this room a lot and I'm in it now like one to two hours a day. I'm just wondering, do you think I'm dehydrated? And uh, he said, possibly, but he said, are you adding salt to your food? And I said, no, I don't, I don't eat salt, actually, no extra salt on my food. And he said, well, you should experiment with it. He goes, I've, I've seen it help a lot of people who are uh, really sweating a lot in their daily yoga practice. So I ended up doing a celery juice protocol by drinking celery juice every day. And then I also started adding in just a little bit of salt into my dressings at night. And my issue corrected itself immediately. And I just want to clarify to people, I, I didn't have any deficiencies. I do get my blood checked. I was fine. It was more just a feeling and knowing what my absolute best feels like and knowing what it feels like when I wake up not feeling 100% after a long evening of hot yoga. And, and sometimes I practice in the morning and sometimes I practice at night. When I do practice at night, I get home at like 9, 10 p.m. So me putting a pinch of salt on my food every night or maybe if I'm eating an avocado to add a little bit of salt on it or something. So other than me feeling better after doing hot yoga by consuming salt, I have not noticed any other differences by eating salt. Uh, I haven't noticed any swelling, my energy levels haven't like completely changed or anything like that and I haven't been sluggish either. Uh, I just feel very stable and normal. Basically what I'm trying to say is there have not been any extreme changes that I've noticed physically after eating salt other than I feel a little bit more energetic, uh, tend to keep my energy more after doing hot yoga. I had a conversation with Dr. Garth Davis about this as well and, and he was reassuring me and telling me that it can actually be good for vegans to have uh, mineral dense salt. I was also asking Dr. Garth Davis about this as well because considering that I had gone such a long stretch of time without having salt, I asked him his opinion on this and he told me that he thought it was great. The type of salt that you consume is very important because uh, regular table salt can actually be detrimental to your health, but if you're consuming salt like Himalayan salt, like pink Himalayan salt, or Celtic sea salt, that these salts actually have useful minerals in them that are good for your body. So uh, iodine would be one of these minerals that is very useful. I remember him telling me as well that these minerals are great for vegans because sometimes you cannot find them in other foods. So thanks Dr. Garth Davis. So basically I started eating salt again because of my daily intensive hot yoga classes that I've been very consistent with um, in order to just replenish those sodium levels. I haven't noticed any bad changes from doing this. I've only noticed positive benefits and I really feel that it's also helped me to enjoy the flavor of my food a little bit more. So that's it. No crazy reasons and I know a lot of you have been asking about that for a long time and for some reason I just feel comfortable talking about this now. I think it's more so that I'm not afraid of, of judgments anymore, people's opinions. This has just been my own personal experience. It doesn't make me better or less than I was before. It's just, it's just this. It just is what it is. Other than that, my eating habits have not changed at all. I still do all my fruits throughout the day. I still do huge salads at night. Many of you guys know this because I'm still sharing my recipes with you all the time and sharing my daily eating habits. And I still believe that it is important to eat a ton of greens on a daily basis. If you can, I really recommend consuming at least one fully raw vegan meal a day. And if you're already past that point, consuming as many greens and fruits in your days as you possibly can. Consider this your reminder for the day to eat your fruits and veggies. Eating your fruits and veggies, it is so important. All right, you guys, so that is my simple answer to that question. Maybe perhaps there's something that I missed, so if so, feel free to ask me about this topic below or even to ask me any other questions that you may have. I'll do my best to respond to as many questions as I possibly can. If you like these Friday FAQ videos, be sure to give this a thumbs up and comment below. Let me know your thoughts and be sure to hit the subscribe button and join the family because there's only more epicness to come. 
I leave for Bali in just a few short weeks to do my first Bali retreat and I cannot wait for that. Also, for those of you who are wanting to go to a future retreat for me, stay tuned to my website. I'll be announcing another retreat shortly after. And if you want the opportunity to ask me a question for me to answer here on these videos, be sure to follow my Instagram as well at Fully Raw Christina. All right, you guys, I hope that you get to go and enjoy the rest of your day. Go do some yoga, go eat a salad. I can't wait to see you all in my next video and I'm sending you all my hugs and my love.